Hello, hearty second graders. Um, I'm here with day two of language arts, and this is covering the day two lesson in your packet on the fox and the grapes, the retelling of Aesop's fables. Yesterday, you worked with Miss Davenport to read this, and she covered how to find the meaning of words that you don't know by using the context clues in the sentences found around the word. So today, our clear learning target is we are learning to retell a fable. So we are going to, at the end of this, be able to write a summary of the fox and the grapes. And don't forget, how do you write a summary? How do you summarize? Rem always remember, use your own words. Keep it short. Tell the main idea of the beginning, middle, and end, and it should answer the questions who, what, when, where, why, and how. But we're gonna focus today on this beginning, middle, and end. And you guys have done this so many times, so I know you're gonna know what to do. And I'm excited for your parents and your family to see you be able to do this as well. All right, so um, let's go ahead and get started. I want you to go get your story, The Fox and the Grapes, All right? Get your copy. I'm gonna wait for just a second. You can pause this video and then we'll get started reading it together. All right, so here we go. Remember to put your finger right there on the words, okay? And I'm gonna put it right here so that I can uh, see it a little easier. The Fox and the Grapes, a retelling of Aesop fables. On one summer day, a fox was walking in the baking sun. His trip had been long and he was traveling alone. There wasn't much shade, so he was very hot. He had not passed any streams, so he was very thirsty. He had not seen anything to eat along the way, so he was very hungry. At last, the path he was following wound through an orchard. The trees provided lovely shade. He thought he would be able to find something to eat and water to drink in the orchard. But when he reached the orchard, he saw that he saw that most of it had been picked clean, but then he spied something purple near the end of the orchard. When he got there, he saw a bunch of grapes ripening on a vine. The vine had gotten looped around one of the high branches of a tree. The grapes dangled down over the path. They looked ripe, juicy, and enticing. Just the thing to quench my thirst, just the thing to ease my hunger, the fox said to himself. He stood on his hind paws and he reached up for the grapes, but they were too high up for him to grasp. So what has happened so far? This is the beginning. So this is where you could stop and write a sentence telling us the main idea or the main point, the main thing that you've learned in the beginning of this fable. He tried pulling a large stone onto the path and standing on it. He still couldn't reach the grapes. He tried stacking two stones on top of one another. He still couldn't reach the grapes. Carefully, he placed a log from the orchard on top of the stones, but he still could not reach the grapes. Backing up a few paces, he ran and then he jumped at the bunch of grapes. He just missed it. He turned around and chanted, one, two, three, go! And he leaped for the grapes again. He landed on the hot, dusty path, again without any grapes. A third time, he tried leaping for the grapes. He had no more success on the third leap than on his first and his second. At last, he tried running and jumping off of the log on the stack of stones and grasped at the grapes. He landed again without having grabbed a single one. He tried a second jump, but only knocked down the pile he had made. He had to rest before restacking everything. Then he jumped toward the tempting morsel again. This time, he felt the cool skin of a grape against his paw, but he couldn't pull it down even one piece of fruit. So here we go, we have the middle of the story. 
So now you can talk about all the things that happen. How can you make it shorter in your own words, down to just one or two sentences to tell someone what happened in the middle part of this story? That is gonna be your middle, the middle of your summary to retell this story. Let's finish the ending. At last, he had, give, he had to give up. He lay panting beside the path under a tree. When he had caught his breath, he got up and looked angrily at the grapes. Then he walked away with his nose in the air saying, I am sure those grapes were sour anyway. Wow, so what happened there at the end? Hmm, did he get his grapes? What was his attitude? Hmm, so that's something to think about. And when you write your main idea of the end of the story, so remember, it's just a short. Keep it in your own words. Keep it short. Tell what happened in the beginning, middle, and end of the story to write your summary. So what we want you to do, we want you to get out a piece of paper, put your name on the top, just like we do at school, and write a B, an M, and an E for beginning, middle, end. Then I want you to write one or two sentences for the beginning, one or two for the middle, one or two for the end, and write a summary of the fable that we just read. And while we're there, let's talk for a second about the definition of a fable. If you remember way back from the beginning of the school year, when we talked about fables and fairy tales, remember that a fable is a story where an animal usually has human traits. In this case, the fox has human traits. It knows how to stack things. Um, it knows how to reason and think about getting its food. Okay, so it has ideas a lot like a human would have ideas. It can solve a problem or tries to solve a problem. All right, and then the other part of a fable is that it teaches a lesson or has a moral. Okay, so in a few days, you're going to talk about finding the moral of this fable with Mr. Anderson. So I want you to be able to read it again carefully. Um, read it as many times as you need. Be sure that you go through the story to find words that you need help spelling. And remember the big three when you're writing. All of your sentences must start with a capital letter, must end with punctuation, and your spelling must be correct. So ask someone for help if you get stuck on a word. Go back to the story to find those words that you need help to spell. And make sure that you have at least three complete sentences for your summary but we would really love to see six complete sentences, right? That way we know for sure that you understand and you have shown us that clear learning target that you are able to retell a fable. All right, so now here in just a moment, we're gonna get started on your word work and I'm gonna show you all about how to do it so there's no confusion and you'll be ready to complete your day two language arts lesson. All right, here is the WordWorks word mat that's included in your packet. Now, it, the instructions tell you to cut the letters apart on the dotted lines, and then we're gonna work to putting the words together and writing those words on the word strips. All right, now that you have your letters cut out, you're gonna ask someone in your family to read you the words at the bottom of day one for the same words that you sorted making them plural and you're going to find those words find the letters to build the word so let's say that you're that someone asked you to spell the word baby so what you're going to do is you're going to find b oh there's a b and y so we've spelled the word baby then you're going to take it and you're going to write it on your sheet. Then when you've completed that, when you've completed all nine words, so you'll slide these letters back in here and start over with a new word. When you've completed all nine words, you're gonna go right here at the bottom and you're gonna write a sentence with one of the words. You pick one of the nine and write one sentence. And remember your sentence must begin with a capital letter, 
and end with punctuation. So it can be about any of those words that you create. All right, so there you go. That's your day two language arts lesson with Miss Quarles. Tomorrow will be brought to you by Miss Tadero. So be sure you come back here to our YouTube channel and see tomorrow's lesson. Then Thursday and Friday will be brought to you by Mr. Anderson. So take what you've learned, go do your work, and then have a nice afternoon. Talk to you soon. Bye.